The silent but elegant placid fields of central Hyrule, the chilling but breathtaking rocky hills and plains of snow of the Hebrew region, all the way to the sunny paradise tropics of Lurland Village and Palamore Beach. It would be an understatement to say that Breath of the Wild is just a beautiful game. It's so unique in comparison to other self-claimed beautiful video games, as any game can be beautiful, but Breath of the Wild brings a whole new meaning to the term, a beautiful video game. Every area in the game is so distinct from each other, and they all hold many sights to see. Central Hyrule has the green fields that were once filled with joy and bliss from the locals and travellers. The Akala region has the cliffs with stunning ocean and sunset views, with isolated and quiet beaches running along the shoreline. There's the Gerudo Highlands and Desert where you could climb to the peak of Spectacle Rock and get a spectacular view of the vast Gerudo Desert. Seeing the sand dunes and ruins from above is truly a stunning sight. The point being, the game is beautiful, and that got me thinking. With all of these spectacular sights to see in Hyrule, what are the best ones to see? Whilst the world is in ruins, it still holds so much beauty, and I believe that actually symbolises the hope for Hyrule during the events of Breath of the Wild. Despite the fact that there was a catastrophic attack 100 years ago, the land remains beautiful. So I wanted to narrow down these beautiful and breathtaking parts of the land, and rank the top 5 most beautiful spots in Breath of the Wild. So here is my list of the top 5 most beautiful or breathtaking areas, locations, or just little spots in Breath of the Wild. In at the opening number 5 spot, we have Selmy's Spot. This isolated area is located at the top of the Hebra Mountains. Now, whilst it's very out of reach and disconnected from the rest of Hyrule, it's one of the most beautiful little areas in the game. There is a population of a whole whopping one person up here, and it's Selmy herself. She lives up here in a small, cosy wooden hut with an inviting and warm fireplace inside. Just outside her home, you're at one of the highest points in the map, and whilst your view isn't the greatest due to the snow in the area, it's still breathtaking. You can look down the mountains and see the pure white snow of the Heber region fall and cover the rocky plains in a thick white blanket of snow, or go for a little walk around the area as it also has a little trail that you can follow. It will lead you around the area which is honestly beautiful. It's so calming and peaceful up here, and if you're lucky, you will sometimes even see the wildlife roaming around up there. There is also the peak of the mountain, just a little bit down from Selmy's house. Overall, the area is fantastic for people like myself who enjoy quiet alone time in a peaceful and relaxing environment, disconnected from society, and to top all of that, there is also a shield surfing trail that you can use just outside Selmy's house, and you can actually win a pretty cool shield from her if you take on her challenge of going down the trail. All in all, this nice little cold and quiet getaway atop the mountains is beautiful. Just be sure to bring warm clothing. All of that is why Selmy's spot gets the opening number 5 spot. Next up, coming in at the number 4 spot is... Lurlin Village. Quite the opposite to Selmy's spot, this tropical paradise of an area is hidden away in the southeast area of Hyrule. Lurlin Village is a getaway, an escape from being on a tough adventure, somewhere with waters as blue as the champion's tunic, filled with bright and colourful coral reefs and fish. Lurland Village is actually a fishing village for the locals, but to us, it's a getaway. You can go for a swim in the bay of the village, chill out by the many beaches in the local area, or hit up the local market for some fresh cuisine caught locally. The village is a very family-like environment. Somewhere a family of Hylians from, say, Castletown or Hateno Village would come for a vacation. It's perfect for that. Beautiful beaches, scorching hot sunshine, boats to take out on a fishing trip, and of course, it's all closed away in this little area of the map. And because it's so hidden and closed away, the Great Calamity never actually affected Lurland Village. So it's as pure as you can get. 
no damage or enemy camps, just a nice relaxing paradise getaway. Some players of Breath of the Wild have actually said they missed this village on their playthrough. That alone just shows how hidden this little paradise is. You'll definitely be in for a relaxing time here. Nearby sites include the Gogby Shores, Soka Point, Palmore Beach and Tuft Mountain. Everything in this area is beautiful, and if you're a real adventure seeker, there is also Eventide Island to sail out to as well, but that comes at your own risk. Anyway, all of this area's beautiful tropics, golden beaches, and just the friendly vibes of the area is why I've given it the number 4 spot on my list. In at the number 3 spot is the Serene Stable and its surrounding area. Now, I say surrounding area because it's a very small area, but it's technically broken into a few different plains and hills. So here I have highlighted the area that I'm talking about. This area is one for the nature lovers, like myself. You have the main settlement being the Serene Stable itself, a typical stable in Breath of the Wild, but shrouded away in a circle of tall trees. A nice and enclosed stable where children can run around and play safely. The fact that it is surrounded by fencing and trees makes it feel a lot safer and closed in. But the main talking points about this area are the grassy plains and hills. You can simply walk out from the stable and go for a very scenic walk or horse ride out into those fields. It's a very simple view, but certainly a stunning one. You have green grass that goes on for what seems like forever, you have those tall and beautiful trees everywhere, and if you like a little bit of edge in your life, you can walk along the edge of the Tanagar Canyon. Just be sure to not get too close to the edge. You can climb up the hills for a peaceful little view of the fields, or head round the corner to chill out by the water. It's undoubtedly the most simple and plain little area, but definitely a very elegant and peaceful one that truly represents the beautiful and wild aspects of this game, as you can see the wind blowing through the grass and flowers, causing the trees to sway ever so slightly, and also be around the wildlife like foxes, birds, and sometimes even wolves. It's a fantastic little piece of land that, due to its elegance and charm, earns my number 3 spot on my list. Now for number 2, we have Satori Mountain. Probably one of the biggest fan favourite locations in Breath of the Wild, this mysterious and magical mountain is filled with secrets and so much beauty. The best time to visit is at night, and be sure to be very stealthy. If you make your way up to the top of the mountain at night, by the cherry blossom tree, you will be presented with one of the most magical sights in Zelda history. You will see the creature known as the Lord of the Mountain, a horse-like creature glowing blue like the Bloopies. Another creature you will find up there, and this experience is phenomenal. Along with the one-of-the-kind sights with the Lord of the Mountain, the area during the day is stunning too. You get a fantastic view of Hyrule and a pretty cute cherry blossom tree with a splash of water below it. The trek up here is also breathtaking. It's filled with trees and a lot of really stunning shots of Hyrule. Just be sure to wear warm clothing as it can become very cold the higher up you go. But once you're up there, definitely stay the night as you will be in for one hell of an experience. The surrounding area also has a few really beautiful sights, such as the pond a little further down the mountain, the Sanadin Park ruins, and a nice little field that normally has a variety of horses within. The phenomenon that occurs here is enough to get Satori Mountain to the number 2 spot alone, but it also has the joy of all of those fantastic views, so that's why Satori Mountain makes the number 2 spot on my list. Before we cover the number 1 spot, here are a few honourable mentions. Spectacle Rock, The Pillars of Leva, Hateno Village, and Cape Calais. Now for number 1. The most beautiful and undoubtedly the most stunning location in Breath of the Wild is... Rito Village. Well, where do I start? This village inhabited by the Rito is breathtaking. A village constructed mostly out of wood wrapping around a pillar of rock erecting from the ground. 
is stunning in itself, but the design and architecture of the village is also a work of art. The homes are like little pods hanging from the rocks and it's amazing to look at, mesmerizing. Everything is connected by little bridges and staircases wrapping around the rocks. The entrance itself is stunning too. You walk over a massive drop along a suspended bridge and go from platform to platform until you reach the base of Rio Village and then work your way up. The views you will get from the village are, in my opinion, the best in the game. Paired with the charming music, it all really adds up to making Rio Village the most beautiful area in the game. The local area is covered by beautiful rocky hills and tall trees. It's a very open and inviting area, and that's something I particularly love about it. It really feels like an area for the Rito. The homes are somewhat like bird cages if you like, and the massive pillar of rock is like a stand for a bird. I love this area to bits, and it is undoubtedly the most beautiful location in Breath of the Wild. Well, there you have it. That's my list of the top 5 most beautiful locations in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Of course, these are just my picks, so be sure to let me know what your picks are and if you agree with any of mine. I look forward to seeing your responses. Some of you may know I have started doing little teasers for upcoming videos, and if you were able to guess the video from said teaser, I said you would get a mention in said video. So here is everyone who managed to guess this video correctly. Be sure to join my Discord server, follow me on Twitter, Instagram or check my community posts here on YouTube to see the teasers and have a chance to be featured in the video. Huge thank you to my Patreon supporters Hexovian, Lenarko1, Keitala, Karika, Safria Sky and Daniel Kelman, as your support really helps me to run the channel and get videos like this one out as often as possible. Thank you very much. Again, I hope you all enjoyed the video, and until the next time, I've been Hyrule Gamer.